While the U.S. is at war claiming to fight terrorism, is the U.S. harboring alleged international terrorists right at home if the crimes they've committed aren't against, or rather are against, enemies of the U.S.? Here to discuss is David Kang. He's associate for Latin America and economic justice at Mary Knoll Office for Global Concerns. I want to thank you for being here. Now, here living right in the United States, you know, some examples. We have a man who killed the former foreign minister of Chile. We have a man who caused the destruction in flight of a Cuban airliner uh, in 1976, killing 73 of its passengers. We have the former Bolivian leader who's accused of genocidal repression against Bolivians back in 2000. Explain how this is possible. Well, I think each case is a little bit different, um, but there is a long history of the U.S. Um, being intimately involved with human rights abusers throughout Latin America, um, especially the, the School of the Americas, now called WINSEC, the Western Hemisphere uh, Institute for Security, um, actually trains, uh, trains Latin American soldiers. And what we find is um, in repeatedly human rights abuse cases that have been tried and, and uh, found uh, people found guilty, uh, the majority of those people have been trained by the School of the Americas here in, here in Georgia. Um, so not only not only do we are we harboring a number of, of, of known terrorists, but we actually have been training people that have gone on to com commit some of the worst human rights abuses in Latin America. Can you explain what's behind that? I mean, what is behind this relationship? Well, I think it's kind of the, the real politic uh, of, of international relations. Uh, the government feels it's necessary to, um, to, to, to ally with people that are in power, and sometimes the people in power are, are, um, are dictators, and sometimes are, are, we've even been involved in, 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 uh, in putting in dictators like uh, Pinochet in, in Chile and others. Um, as a way of making sure that business business flows freely between our in, uh, among our countries. So is this and about economics? I think primarily it has a lot to do with that. Um, a, lot, a lot of this is to, to guarantee sort of uh, the free market functioning well. Um, in the case of um, uh, Posada de Cadiz, he was the one that uh, responsible who admitted to being involved in the in the bombing of the Cuban flight when 70, 73 people died. He has a long history, long documented history of, uh, of working with the CIA uh, throughout Central America. That's been very well documented by the National Security Archives. Um, so, in, in, like in his case, the U.S. doesn't want to have a, a court court case against him because a lot of information would come out about his involvement with the U.S. in the past. So they're kind of um, wanting to put that away. Um, in the case of Gonzalo Sanchez de Lozada, he's the former uh, Bolivian president. He's uh, fleeing justice for his involvement in the what's called the October, October Massacre in Bolivia in 2003. Uh, people protesting against a plan of his to sell uh, gas very cheap, natural gas very cheaply to the U United States and Mexico. People were protesting that, that proposal. Um, and he sent out the, the military um, and over a period of a few days, 67 people were killed, over 400 people were injured. Well, what about the victims back in these leaders and these people's countries? Did they have any chance of ever seeing these perpetrators or, you know, accused perpetrators brought to trial? Well, not yet. The, the trial, for instance, against uh, Goni, who's the, the, the nickname for Gonzalo uh, Sanchez de Lozada from Bolivia, he, um, there is a, there's a court case currently um, going on in, uh, in Bolivia. Um, and there's an extradition order for him and two of his former ministers, his defense minister and his uh, my, uh, natural resources minister, uh, who fled uh, days after the massacre in 2003 and have been living here since. And why um, does the Uni United States not extradite them despite the request of their countries? Right. In the case of in the case of this in this case of Goni, Goni um, is, an, is, a, is very very well connected, especially with the Democratic Party, um, but of the Republican Party as well. He. He studied here at the University of Chicago. He has a number of friends here. Uh, while he was president in the in the 90s, he was kind of a poster poster um, example of, of what a, a sort of a neoliberal uh, president should do in terms of privatizing um, public resources, cutting uh, cu cu cutting government spending and things. Um, so he's he's very well tied to to the Clinton administration while while he was in, in power. Um, Greg Craig, who, who was uh, President Obama's uh, chief counsel for uh, until very recently, he he is defend he was uh, Goni's defendant uh, defense lawyer in the civil case that's that's currently running against him and, and his defense minister uh, in Miami. So it sounds like a lot of connections. I, I, I want to ask people. you, you know, aside from that, is it 
How hypocritical is it of the United States to come out and criticize countries like China for human rights violations when the U.S. is, you know, best friends with some of these people that in their countries are considered human rights violators? I, I, I would agree. I think it is pretty, it, it's quite hypocritical. And it's, uh, I mean, you have the, the case of, of Guantanamo. I mean, perhaps the most blatant, you know, case where, where people just, uh, government officials decided that torturing people is okay and, and considered that, that okay and, and went, went along and did that. Uh, so I, I do see a lot of hypocrisy. I think a lot of it is, is sort of uh, built because of this really desire of sort of national security, um, of the idea that we need to guarantee our security. Does it? Does well, that's, it? That's, I mean, that's maybe what we're trying that's to say. the you know, counter-argument. That's exactly what our office tries to say is that um, only, only when everybody in the in the world feels secure, only by guaranteeing the secure, security not of only of ourselves but of, of other nations as well, will we actually, you know, be able to reach actual security. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us.